Hey YouTube, I had gotten some uh, comments when I was uh, that I was going to be building a deck here, and that's why I cut a lot of the two by sixes that I did with the wood miser. And I'm just getting ready to get it started because um, I'd like to have it done by the Fourth of July. Now, normally a deck like this, a carpenter who knows what he's doing and a good helper, one helper can build this entire deck usually in a day, day and a half. You know, it doesn't take long to frame it out and everything. Of course, uh, you know, and I, I'm going to use my excuse, I'm older. And as you get older, you get slower. But anyway, just to give you an idea what's going on here, that up there is fairly flat, but it runs downhill very, very hard here. So the deck is going to be, you know, maybe about a foot and a half or so off the ground where the holes are. Now you can see the holes here. And this deck is, because of the curvature of the ground, this doesn't look straight, but it's straight from that post hole to this post hole. At the bottom of the hole there's concrete. Depending upon how much concrete I had at the time, all you need is eight inches of concrete to hold up the deck at the bottom of a good hole, you know, a good solid hole, which I have here. So. The deck goes straight up to the house, and then over here, the deck comes on an angle on a 45. The reason I have that is because I want to be able to get my lawn tractor around here to, to uh, be able to go from one part of the yard to the other, so I don't have to cut any more trees down. And then it just goes straight over here. Now, normally, you would build piers right next to the house where you're going to build the deck. You would put the piers and then you would start with your post right at the corner of the house. The problem with this is that this concrete, this house is on a concrete slab, and the foundation wall comes all the way out to here. So I don't want to be fooling around with that. And because the foundation wall is not necessarily flat and perfectly true, I wanted to use these piers for a more uniform uh, uh, way of setting the post. So I'm just going to fill the deck. The deck is going to come here and then I'll extend the boards over to come close to the house. I'm not attaching the deck to the house. The deck is going to be freestanding. Now I know in a lot of parts of the country you have a lot of wind and a freestanding deck may not be a good idea. But I can always bolt them to the footings. But the problem is I don't have problem with wind here. The best wind we ever had was one time since I've been here. I think we had a 70 mile an hour wind but it ends up being above the trees. So you know, it's really not coming directly on the house. So then what I did here was I took a, I have a nice blade that I made from an old garden tractor, you know, a little dozer blade or a little snowplow blade. And I put it on my backbone and I just scraped this out of here so that it's running downhill a little bit so no water lays in here. Then I laid a sheet of plastic on here and just threw some stone down to cover the plastic. The plastic is to keep the grass from growing or any roots growing and coming up through the deck. Um, the stone is not important other than that it's holding the plastic down. But what's nice about stone is it makes it easy for you to walk on. You're not getting muddy. You can kneel on it. You're not getting all dirty. Your cords are not getting, your tools are not getting all dirty. And I like to work like that. One thing that I found out about a lot of people when they build things throughout my life of doing building is they're in such a hurry to get to the main part that they neglect what's underneath. Um, whether it be a house and you don't grade off underneath, you just leave it rough and you build the house on top of it, like say if you're on a tilt or whatever, or if you're uh, building a deck, you don't bother to clean up underneath and the next thing you know you got a oak tree growing, trying to grow under the deck. You can cut it off as it comes through the deck boards, but it's just a nuisance. So that's the purpose of the plastic. The stone is just to make it look neater. Along the edges here, I'll dress that up with uh, topsoil to back up the stone after the deck is built. So the deck's probably going to end up about this height. This uh, um, fire pit is not going to be really high. It's going to be very low. I mean, if you've ever seen the Japanese, uh, old-time Japanese movies, they had like a, a heating pit inside the house. This is similar to that idea. It's, it's low. Now, it's not below the deck, but it's going to be a little bit above the deck. For the, uh, 
you know, you would think, okay, well, the deck is wood, that's fire. Yes, it is, but I'm responsible, so I'm not worried about it. So anyway, uh, this is the start of the deck, and now I'll be able to start. Uh, I want to use the, I'm going to use treated posts for the holes. I bought them already. But I want to take the, all of the joists that I cut out of uh, the white pine that you saw me cut, the 2 by 6s I want to cut that, or paint them with that um, womanizing stuff that I bought. And then uh, I can go from there. Like I say, this deck's not attached to the house. It's just going to look like it. So, the 4 by 4s like, say, along this side here, when I put the, the, uh, the, band joists around here and I tie into them I'll let and I go to set the top decking on top of that I'll just bring the decking out and extend it and cut it so that it's real close to the house but I don't want it to be against it so we're supposed to get rain today it didn't happen but anyway I'll just give you a little bit of a I guess a closer up here of what's going on See, there's, there's concrete in the bottom of these holes. There's a little carmine. I made a thing here, carmine and grandpap, and the date. There's dirt in it, but you can see a good one, and there's no dirt on it. And then you can see these other, that's concrete there, here, this one. Now, these haven't been set to any particular height. I, there, what happened was, uh, my one neighbor said to me that he would dig these holes, and he did dig them for me, and I appreciate that. But it didn't give me enough time to really, you know, figure out the height of everything and grade it all off like I, I could have. I could have made these, this concrete exactly even with one another, but I didn't. But I did take a shot on top of them with all of the, with the, uh, a, a transit or a rotating laser rather. So I know where they are in, in relation to one another. I just got to cut the boards. And then out in here, um, I'll just uh, either... The deck won't be that high out here, probably about 8 inches. It'll be like a step. So you'll be able to step right down onto it. But I kept some flat rocks that I have here that were over in this area. And I'm going to use them to put down just a step onto from the deck. But I still want to be able to drive over them with the lawnmower without hitting anything. And I gotta, <coughs> I'll move some of these rocks later to clean up around there a little bit. So, that's where we're at so far. You can see that we're getting something coming in. So I appreciate you guys watching, and I, again, I appreciate all your comments. I don't think for one minute that I take the comment lightly. I read every one of them. I do it every morning, lunchtime I read them, and then I do it at nighttime. So hopefully I don't get so many viewers that I can't answer them. I wouldn't like that, but whatever. Okay, so that's where we're at so far. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say to you guys is don't think that I start things and don't finish it. I do, but like I know you saw me working up at the house there getting ready the other day and I've been working on molding. But as an old construction worker, you know, you fight the weather. So you try to do as much as you can in nice weather outside and save some of the other stuff for the inside work. Even though, even though, um, retired and don't need inside work anymore, I, I still have that thought in my head. Because I used to like to keep my guys working rather snowed, rained, or anything else. I liked when they had to ask for it to get off. Anyway, that's where I'm at so far with this. And uh, you'll see me go from here. Have a good one, guys. i got to get the 2x6s set up somehow so that I can... Uh, start painting them. That womanizing stuff from what I understand is nasty stuff. So I I was going to set horses up over in here and set up the, the deck lumber, which would be ideal because I can cut it and build it right away, but I think I'll do it uh, over in the driveway there a little bit. Oh, I got to get caught up with cutting my grass and stuff. Man. Alright guys. Have a good one. Bye. Guys, this is the blade I was talking about. Now this thing has been, this blade is made for a garden tractor. It's not made for a backhoe that can pull four tons or five tons. So it's just for a garden tractor. I beefed it up a little bit. I still bent it up, but 
The nice thing about it is it has that flat edge there, and I just bolt it onto the bucket, the two bolts. I could probably put drill holes in the bolts and just put R clips in there, but I didn't do that the day I put it together, and I just keep a ratchet in the truck with me to put it on. But it just slips on and up, and it really makes grating a lot easier with this blade and the back hoe. I can reach things that I couldn't reach with the front bucket. I just thought you might want to see that. So it's just an old, it's the exact same blade that I use for my tractor now. It's just an older blade. Uh, a guy had an ad in the paper one time to sell tires for the, the tractor I have. So I went and looked at the tire and he had the blade sitting there. So I put a new blade on my tractor and used this old one on the backhoe. I have another snowplow blade that I actually want to put on here uh, from a Jeep. I think it's a six foot blade. But uh, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. I just picked that up this year as well.